complex is in pretty good shape, but uh, not under control. They're only saying 18%, 250,000 acres, but um, with this cool weather, it's uh, pretty good shape. Right? <coughs> Sounds like things are looking up. Well, that was until we lost pretty much all the phone and internet. Um, we think right now that uh, the rema the internet has a ring. It uh, rings through the county here, and uh, of course the internet uh, down between Pateras and Brewster burned up, and that won't be fixed for a while. But the feed coming from the other side, they think there's a break in Ponderay County, which has um, pretty much taken the internet out in the county. That's that may be why I don't know if you have it or not, but if you're on uh, fiber or something through a PUD, internet is all down. That is affirmative. We are down over here in Q. Uh, I think our supply comes across Tonk. Yep, and then I think it feeds from Omac Mountain up to Tonk, and uh, from Omac it goes down to uh, Omac City proper, and then it, and that comes from the PUD fiber, which, as I say, um, it's a ring, and if it's disconnected in Ponderay, we're not going to get it here. Break. So we have been uh, working for about, uh, what, uh, since a week ago Monday, whenever that was, and now we have uh, brought a Type 3 incident management team to the county EOC to manage uh, everything in the county from, uh, you name it, we've got dead cattle, we've got, uh, uh, we have uh, no power, of course, and uh, a bunch of other stuff. We're currently feeding... Um, I think about a thousand people over there in Twist and Renter and um, um, got an animal shelter open up at the fairgrounds. Let me think, there's got to be some other things too. Well, they were going to leave the um, structures up uh, for the beer garden uh, when we were done it with the Blues Festival so the Red Cross could come in and set up and I'm pretty sure they did that. You mean out in the field where the, uh, the where, where the festival was? Uh, primitive, right there out of winter on the west side. Um, they were planning on leaving up everything because the Red Cross wanted to come in and set up right there, and they said okay. Were they setting up for what? Shelters or what? I'm not sure exactly. Um, all the word I got was the Red Cross wanted to come in there and set up. I would assume it's for shelter and, and supplies and everything else because... Uh, Yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, they have these shelters set up at uh, in the Red Barn itself uh, because they had a, a community meeting tonight and they had to have the the briefing, so to speak, held outside uh, because the shelter was inside. And, of course, they all got rained on pretty hard in the briefing. Uh, of course. So, anyway, for... Um, for everybody's information, PUD is trying to get the power on. I think it was uh, down in Pateras by Friday, and then they said uh, by the the Manhau power, that is Twist from Winthrop by Saturday. But I just heard they pushed it off to maybe Sunday because all the burned snags up there on Loop Loop Pass, um, uh, some of them have fallen down on the old existing line that didn't burn up. So now they got to fix more line in addition to putting in new line where it got burned up. Roger that. Sounds like quite a job they have ahead of them. Um, are they bringing in uh, PUD people from, or uh, electrical people from all over the other counties like uh, they did here? Uh, they are. They have BPA to help with the transmission lines. and They had Chelan and Douglas, that's the last I heard, and they were talking about bringing um, other PUD crews in uh, because all the secondary connections from the transformer to the to the uh, houses, um, even if they get the transmission lines and get the cities going, they still have all those little farm houses out in the middle of the boonies that they have to fix one by one. I understand that uh, the biggest problem is the transformers that all blew uh, that are going to have to be replaced. I guess that's even uh, uh, more time consuming in the long run than all the lines. Um, let's see, there was something else I was going to ask you. Now I, it slipped my mind. Maybe it'll come back to me. Yeah, they also pretty much, well, they got a shortage on poles because, you know, so, uh, there's, I don't know, hundreds, I wouldn't say thousands, but there's hundreds of poles that just burned up. And, 
you know, you normally, in a reasonable sense, don't keep that many poles in stock. Right, I can see that. Yeah, it's going to be a while. Um, you know, it's times like this that I'm really glad I'm off grid. Yeah, roger that. So, um, but the only other thing you could say is you're glad that you didn't have a fire, because when fire comes, it doesn't matter whether you're on the grid or off the grid. Uh, you're totally right there, and I'm real glad I didn't have a fire. Um, I did have to look out here, though. Uh, there was a nearby strike. Um, I mean, there was like less than a second from the flash to the boom, so it was right nearby, within a thousand feet somewhere. And not sure which way it was at, but I looked all around, and uh, we did not get a fire from that thing. down in Chelan and came through Carlton and worked its way kind of to the northeast like it normally does, so I know they had a strike up in Tenasca and took out a transformer there. So we'll have to wait until tomorrow. Uh, fortunately, there was the rain, uh, but see if there are any uh, holdovers that uh, turn into fires tomorrow. Hear that. Um, Scott, I really appreciate all this updating you're giving me. Uh, if you have the time and the ability to so uh, if you could do this every evening um, uh, so I could you know, make sure the word stays passed over here, I'd really appreciate it. Well, I'll, I'll make a commitment. Like I say, I'm working about uh, 18, 20-hour days, so uh, sometimes i got a little too much on my plate. But uh, just to let you know, uh, over in the EOC, uh, they made the decision, not mine, but the, uh, but the communications tech uh, made the decision to tie it into Chelan because we have another team down there. So that's that's why I don't know how much information is getting across on the 4-5, but I suspect it's not much. I remember what I was going to ask. Um, I heard that uh, you guys are on HF now, too, uh, on the new EOC down there. Do you know what frequency that is? I'm very sorry. I do not. Um, I've just had my... Um, Internet's going to 
be a while. Roger, Roger. Now that's kind of an all our eggs in one basket thing. Uh, <laughs> kind of sad to see. But anyway, thank you, AP7LI. Roger that. Um, any other questions out there? Okay, N7SJM uh, mobile monitoring. In seven SJM W seven MCM. Uh, go ahead there, Mike. Hey Scott, just want to say thank you for the update and thank you for what you're doing. Uh, we'll help where we can. W seven MCM. Well, Roger that. I can say a little busy. I'll I'll try and get an update on the on the uh, four or five uh, a little earlier in the evening. But overall, fire is looking as good. This uh, this lightning uh, path that went through looks like right now it's pretty much over, but that didn't help much. Um, and I don't think we had, at least to my knowledge, we didn't have any severe flash flooding that they predicted might happen. Yeah, I saw a news clip on uh, Channel 5 from Winthrop. They got some heavy-duty rain. Just it doesn't take long. It doesn't take much of a rainstorm to cause a flood and, and make a muddy mess out of everything. Well, they'll work through it. Rain's good and bad. So, all right, Scott, uh, you take care, and uh, I'll be monitoring all of, all I can. Roger that. Thanks, Mike. N7SJM.